Now this week we're going to be looking at the second aspect of design and technology, which is around food and fibre production and food specialisation. Now these two concepts are taught in an integrated way in primary school. Um, but first we're going to revise the processes and production skills, the stages that students go through in completing design challenges. So starting with investigating and defining, then generating and designing solutions, producing and implementing their solutions, evaluating and testing their solutions, and collaborative, collaborating and managing those processes. So these are really important skills and techniques that you will be teaching your students throughout the various years of design and technology education. And these stages are mirrored also in digital technologies. But in particular in design and technology, they form a very central core of the design process. The concepts, the core concepts of design and technology are engineering principles and systems and materials and technology specializations that we looked at last week. And this week we're looking at food and fiber production and food specializations. Now food and fiber production is the processes of where food comes from and where fibers come from. Things that we can grow, so natural fibers wool, um, cotton, the various other fibers that are part of our world. Now there are five dimensions of this food and fiber production. The idea that we want things to be sustainable and that food, food and fiber productions are essential for human beings, but we need to manage them in ways that are sustainable and don't destroy the environment for today and in particular for future generations that they involve the use of resources. Growing food takes up some land. It uses water. It uses often um, herbicides and pesticides. So there are a range of different resources involved in the production of food and fiber. Um, but these can be physical, financial, social, and environmental. And they all need to be balanced with the benefits gained from these products. There is a range of sciences and technologies involved in food and fiber production. Um, harvesting uh, food, ha harvesting plants and so forth, um, shearing sheep, various techniques for milking cows, um, very technological compared to um, many past generations where it was done without a lot of technology. But nowadays most farms are very, very um, technologically based and they track a huge amount of data and using that data they decide when to water, when to apply um, fertilizer, when to harvest, when to milk. All of these different processes are very much automated in most farming environments today. We also look at the economy and how food and fiber production is an important aspect, particularly of the Australian economy, which is quite reliant upon the production of food and fiber. And then we look at the people involved, the farmers, um, those that are involved in turning these products into other products, such as taking uh, wool and turning it into garments, the transport industry, which is involved in moving food and fiber around not only Australia, but the globe. So there are a whole range of different uh, people involved in food and fiber production. And one of the aspects is to look at their career paths, incorporating those aspects. So, food and fiber production, it, um, students will explore a whole range of interesting concepts and ideas. One of them, particularly in the younger years, can be looking at um, bush tucker, how we can gain a number of food items from the local environment and where it's safe or not safe or palatable to find those foods. We can look at the food distribution around Australia, where are different things grown and why are they grown or not grown in different areas? Bananas are grown in certain tropical areas, um, apples in um, colder climates. There are reasons associated with that because different plants and um, so forth and animals require different conditions on which to thrive. So exploring that and understanding that is an important part of food and fiber production. And then there's the actual processes and uses. And 
most primary schools now have some form of garden that students use to learn about the cultivation and growing of plants. And some schools also incorporate the uses of animals. Now, if you are incorporating animals, there are more stricter guidelines around that. Um, we want to make sure that animals are treated humanely. Um, and there are quite strict regulations on how that is um, conducted in schools that you can find policies on. So there are benefits though for um, students doing their own gardening. Have a look at the video that explores some of those and some of the different types of gardening or harvesting of foods and plants that can occur, such as growing trees for wood and wood harvesting and various other types of um, plant growth that students may be unfamiliar with, such as rice and other um, foods from other cultures and countries. So another aspect of food and fiber production is looking at the variety of foods and animal products and fibers that are developed and the manufacturing processes and refinement and development processes of doing what they call farm to plate how we get food from where it is produced, normally transported, normally processed, then distributed to um, supermarkets and other places, and then finally to homes where it's then prepared and cooked, and then eventually then gets to the students' plates. But that's a long, complicated process that many students are quite unaware of. Not only for their food, but for their clothing and other um, plant and animal products. So have a look at those activities and as a challenge, think about where you could take your students on an excursion to learn more about food and fiber production.